that even unevenly, but get to see faces again. Hope we impress you today, although it's not hard to not impress people because it's speaking, right? Like, who can't do that? But let's begin it off with Alex Matthews, our president. We're gonna have a thought. 
Well, I was going to let you guys say. Oh, come on up, man. Sound? Yes, come on up. Thank you, Fahim, our sergeant at arms. Would everyone for the next 15 seconds just close their eyes briefly and think about the progress they want to make and the skills they want to improve at our meeting tonight? Just 15 seconds. Okay, we're ready. If everyone can look at the agenda in front of them, in the bottom left hand corner, there is a, a club statement, is it, for you? Yes. Our club statement would, Zach Vargas, would you stand up and recite yours? Okay. We provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Okay, if you're from Dr. Pierce's communication class, we have a sign in right here that I'll be sending to her after the meeting. So if you haven't signed that, be sure to do that. Also, heads up, we have a camera videotaping every meeting for the, uh, to help out the people who speak. So we'll get evaluations from everyone. Um, written down and we'll also have this recording that you can look at and perfect your speeches. So if you're scared, you should be. <laughs> and I'll explain. Before I introduce the person who runs these meetings, who puts in the most time and effort, who makes or breaks the meeting, like I tell you every week, which will be Larry Brooks actually, before I introduce him, I want to let you all know what Toastmasters is about for the people who are new. I see a few new faces. What's your name? I'm Brandon. Brandon. Okay, Brandon, have you been to a Toastmaster meeting before? No, first time. Okay, the number one thing you need to know is there's three parts to the meeting. Prepared speeches, impromptu speaking, and evaluations. And during the whole meeting, everyone with a role is going to be evaluated with these slips. So during the meeting, you'll write down feedback for the people who speak, and then you'll pass them into the middle row in which they'll be collected. It sounds kind of confusing, but our Toastmaster Day will walk you through it. Easy. So with that being said, I'd like to introduce our Toastmaster of the Day today, who's going to run the meeting. It's his second time only being Toastmaster of the Day. If we can give him a warm round of applause and welcome to the stage. Which is prepared speeches. And our first speaker today is Fahim. He's going to give a speech on um, competent, competent communicator speech aid, which is using visual aids. And the speech's name is How to Sell the Pen. Now, come on. Oh, yeah, and the speech is five to seven minutes. <laughs> Interviewing world, interviewer goes up to you, say you. It's like, sell me this pen. What would you do? I don't know. Maybe sell. talk about the features? Sell to me, rather than explain to me, sell it to me. All right, this pen is mm -hmm. one of the best pens you can imagine. Why is it the best? The best pen? ink in the world. It's not any ordinary $1 pen you might find in Dollar General or Family Dollar. It's a pretty good pen. Keep getting there, but the thing is about one thing about sales pitching, never lie to your customer. <laughs> <laughs> you do that, you lose your credibility, you never get a sale again. You lose it, gone completely. So the best thing is sales pitching, give it like a story. Go in depth, speak on about it, and never lie. One of the biggest things. But you know, instead of me telling you how to do this, I'll break it down into four simple steps. Step one, ask the person what they do. Like, how will they use the product, you know, like the pen? What will they do? Are they an accountant who writes uh, tea accounts every day? <laughs> or 
a manager who signs checks, depends on what they do, you have to connect to them on like their own field, you know? Step two, why is it important to them? Depending on what they do, you gotta see if they can use it. Like if they're IT, they don't need a pen. They'd be like, it's junk. You gotta find something or some aspect of your product that could easily relate to them and how they could use it. Say for managing, you could be like, it's used for signing, I guess important checks, like the ink from like a blue pen supposedly could easily distinguish a copy from the original document. It's easily accessible in the aspect where it's much more unique in viewing, I guess you could say. You know, the different colors could easily distinguish what you have and what you don't. Third step, highlight on the emotional use for the pen. You gotta connect it in another way. You got physical, mental, now you gotta get emotional. The last one, the biggest one I'd say. How would you do this, right? You could say, well for one, handwritten note. A handwritten note has a lot of sentimental value. How can you write the handwritten note? You can't write pencil, because you look like a child when you do that, you know? You gotta have the pen. Write with the pen, you look mature, has a lot of value, because you spent the time to write it, and shows that it contains a lot of memories, you know? Another way you could say this pen, or a pen in general, could contain a lot of value, or I guess aspect in value, would be for the presidents. When they sign treaties, they never use the same pen again. They sign a treaty with one pen, and they give that pen to the person who contributed most to forming the treaty. That's to indicate that the person who contributed most was part of making the history. It's like a souvenir for them. It has a lot more value than a regular generic pen. If you want to sell them something, make value for it. Make them easily relatable to what they want to sell. And then, you've got the first three, right? The last one's closing. You close up your sale, I guess you could say, with the simple, of the second one or the third one, argument that you'd initially placed. First, well, the second one at least was the value of the pen. Like, you could sign stuff with it, you know what I mean? And third being emotional value, whichever suits most to the client, I guess you could say, and that moment. And when you make the value, you know, you can get sold. It seems like I can show an example. Who wants to be my clientele for this operation? Yes. Oh, don't worry. I got this. Guys, just turn around a little over here. You know? Got spinny chairs. You can do this. Right here, right? Yes, sir. What do you think about the pen? It's, it's all right. Uh, or grab a spoon. Like, what do you find like that's awesome about it? Though? I trust you? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> what is there not to trust about me? <laughs> it's that. Nothing. <laughs> My point exactly. And that's how you sell a pen. So just make value for it. If you make value for it, you sold it. Thanks, guys. Take a little time to write out evaluations for a printed speech. And during this time, I'll explain the three evaluation rooms we have for each meeting. The first one is the timer, which this person takes time for every speech, whether it's impromptu speaking or prepared speech. And they help the speaker keep time. The next one is the off counter. They count how many times the speaker says words like ah, uh, like, and just fill the words. And then the last one is a grammarian. They uh, make sure that the speaker speaks clear sentences and, no, and make sure whenever they say run-ons or improper ways of speaking.
slips down the line. Are we good? Can you reiterate the uh, <coughs> the different uh, things that you need to write down? Oh, different things you need to write down? Yeah. Okay, so whenever you do evaluation, you um, you say the good the things you like about what the speaker says, like, oh, you did this well. And then after that, you'll say one thing you can improve. And then after that, you say something else you like. So you make a good, bad, good sandwich. Hey. May I, may I chirp in real quick? Oh, yes. Each of the projects, uh, the manuals, the speeches they give are focused on certain items. Fahim's speech was focused on? Visual aids. Visual aids. So we like to try to keep the evaluations focused on those things, but you can tell them anything you want. So if you hate them, tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me you hate it. Tell me you love it. <laughs> That's how you improve. <laughs> Okay, so our next speech is from the Competent Communicator, speech number two, and the speaker is Austin Leach, and the speech is called Plan A Plus, and it's five to seven minutes. All right, Austin. I'll tell you that Alex was talking about before. My speech is project two, which is about organizing. So you're looking at my, my content and how I organize. Okay, so preparation is the, probably the most important aspect of being successful. Just look at everyone who comes up here today. We all prepare for our roles. Some